Erica here with Prep Scholar GMAT. Many students don't know how to study for the GMAT. This is a problem, especially for students who are self-studying without the aid of an instructor or tutor. They spend 50, 60, 100 hours studying and still see no significant improvement. But this doesn't have to be you. In this video, we'll go over your most important GMAT study tool, the error log, and how you can use it to get more benefit out of reviewing one problem than drilling 20. As always, if you like this video, please hit the button to subscribe and feel free to check out our online program and tutoring options on the Prep Scholar website or head over to our blog for even more great GMAT content. As always, links in the description. To improve your score on the GMAT, you need to stop making the mistakes that you're currently making. That's pretty obvious. But how do you do that? The trick is to spend the bulk of your study time on reviewing, analyzing, and addressing your mistakes. The easiest way to do that is by making an error log. Your error log should have at least four components, which, what, why, and how. I like to create a table where each row is an error and each component is a column. Which is for which problem you missed. Your error log isn't super useful if you don't know what problem you made the error on, so it's important to know which problems you struggled with. If you're handwriting an error log, this can be writing down where the problem comes from so that you can look it up later. For example, if you're using the Prep Scholar online program, you might write Exponent Rules Quiz, April 3rd, 2018, question 8. If you're doing a digital error log, you can put a screenshot or photo of the problem directly in the log document for ease of access. What is for what you did wrong? This is the simple but specific identification of what happened that caused you to get the question wrong. Now, this could be an honest-to-goodness mistake, like a computation error or reading the question wrong. It could be something you just didn't know, like a formula or a grammar rule. Or it could be something bigger, like not understanding a passage or running out of time. Why is for why you made the error in the what column. This is where things get harder. What caused you to make this specific mistake? So if you made a computation error, is it because you tried to do the math in your head instead of on scratch paper? If you read the question wrong, is it because you were rushing and neglected to write down key information? If you didn't understand a passage, is it because you didn't spend enough time on an initial skim before jumping straight into the questions? Now note, it's important here not just to focus on why you picked the wrong answer, but also to focus on why you didn't pick the right answer. Did you rule it out incorrectly? Did you not give it enough attention? Why is that? How is for how you can avoid this error next time. If we've done a good job identifying the why, this step should be pretty straightforward. Maybe we need to use our scratch paper more effectively. Maybe we need to rephrase critical reasoning questions in our own words, like we talked about in our recent video. Maybe we need to focus on introduction and conclusion sentences, as well as sentences with transition words when skimming passages. Or maybe we just need to memorize the combined work formula for quant or recognize that lists equal parallelism on sentence correction. Well, okay, now that you've put all the time into making this error log, how can you use it to improve your score? First, the act of making the error log itself forces you to think through your mistakes. When reviewing problems, it's really easy to stop after identifying what you did wrong. The how and the why steps are critical to understanding and preventing mistakes. Second, you can use the error log as a constantly up-to-date study guide. If you read straight down the how column, you've got a list of the most important things that you need to remember on practice tests and on test day itself. Finally, it's a great way to plan future study as it makes it easy to identify patterns in your mistakes. If you keep seeing the same thing in the why column, you know that it's something you particularly need to work on before test day. On the other hand, if you stop seeing an entry in your why column, you know that you've made progress on that particular weakness and you can focus on other things. And that's how you can study for the GMAT effectively using an error log. If you have any questions on what we talked about today or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and happy GMAT studies.